Well, joining yeah. me now is Carl Rove, former senior advisor to President George W. Bush and a Fox contributor. Carl, thanks for being here today. A you lot bet. to talk about here. Let me start with this. We're hearing repeated denials from the administration that we have a crisis on our hands and that it was caused by anything the administration has done. But I think most people can look at this honestly and say the cause and effect here is pretty simple. Why these repeated denials? I don't know. I think they, they think they can get away with it, maybe. But look, think about this. In February of 2020, there were 37,000 apprehensions of unaccompanied minors, families, and single adults at the border. This year, 100,000. That's a 170% increase over one year. And a key difference is, is that the large number of single adults last year, if you were seeking refugee status, you had to go back to Mexico and wait there. This year, if you want an asylum status, you get released on your own recognizance. We literally have busloads, Greyhound busloads full of refugee seekers who are being let loose at the Brownsville um, Greyhound station, other Greyhound bus stations along the border to make their way north into the United States because the administration may say that it doesn't want people to come here, but actions speak louder than words and releasing people on their own recognizance as refugee asylum seekers into the United States is entirely different than what was happening last year when you were told if you got if you got intercepted, you went to Mexico or back to your home country and had to wait there to file your, your asylum status. So if, if you're a migrant, Carl, who do you believe, candidate Biden or President Biden? It seems to me most believe candidate Biden. Your thoughts? Yeah, the bigger problem was is that candidate Biden was believed by the cartels, uh, by the coyotes who immediately said, we're going to have, if he wins the election, we're going to have an easier time moving people into the United States of America. Let's ramp up our business operation. These people do not necessarily make it to the border all by themselves. They are part of a gigantic system that is fueled by criminal enterprises who take what little money these people have and what little, what great hope they have and send them north to the United States of America. And those, those well-organized cartels and coyotes heard what candidate Biden said, and particularly as it became apparent that he had a good chance of winning, and then after he won, have moved to fill this void and to take advantage of this policy. You know, you've rightly focused on the substance of this issue. Of course, there's the political implications of this, and everything that's happening on the border is very, very visible. The American people can see it. They don't have to believe somebody else. They can look with their own eyes, especially if they're near the border. What are the political implications of this, Carl, as America watches what's going on and starts to think ahead to 2022? Well, I think it's going to, you know, last year we saw a big movement along the border from the Democrats to the Republicans. Uh, the, the further west you got along the Rio Grande River, the deeper into what's called the Eagle for Shale, an oil and gas play, uh, the worse it got for the Democrats, the bigger the movement from Democrat to Republican. And, and that was because of the threat against energy jobs. That threat is still there. Now we have a gigantic, after having a year of relative calm along the border, uh, over a year, last year about, in the last fiscal year, about a half a million people crossed the border and were apprehended, and they were returned. This year, we're on pace to have over a million people cross the border illegally in this uh, fiscal year, and they're not being returned back into Mexico. They're being dropped off in these communities. Imagine if you're living in Brownsville or McAllen or Harlingen or Far or Mission or Laredo or El Paso. What is happening to your community with these people desperate for help, in many cases in need of health care, looking for jobs, looking for a way to sort of keep themselves together, being dumped into your communities. The cost to these communities is enormous, and we've got to do something to help them. Carl, I think those stories are going to be told over the next two years, and it's going to have a big impact on how Americans think about the immigration debate. Thanks so much for your time today, Carl Rove. Really appreciate yeah. it.